You are watching The New American Media. Hello, 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 and happy Thursday, everybody. This is a special edition of the Unhappy Hour live sports program on the newamericanmedia.com. My name is Brian Engelman, and I'm going to be your host today. We're starting to get used to this whole floating show idea. We usually have our regularly scheduled shows every 3.30 p.m. Pacific time for the Unhappy Hour live sports program, followed by Agree to Disagree at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. We will still have our show tomorrow, and that is going to have Dr. Jose Jaramillo. Dr. Jose Jaramillo is a Mayan scholar. Dr. Jose Jaramillo is going to talk to us about the Mayan calendar, December 21st, 2012, and what all of the fuss is about. Dr. Jose has been a guest on our program before, and he will be again. We said we want to have him on once a month as we lead up to December 21st, 2012, but not quite sure that's going to happen the way he travels. He's down in Mexico. He's giving this lecture. He's doing this speech. We'll talk about that a little bit more, and you can check it out on YouTube. By the way, if you're discovering this show on YouTube, please, we implore you, please click subscribe so you do get our updates when we post our live sports shows and then also our other shows about finance, spirituality, politics, and everything else you're not supposed to talk about with other people inside of a bar. But for now, it is the unhappiest time of the week. It's time to talk sports. And we're going to bring in Zach Barris. Zach is he's kind of a regular co-host at this point. Lifelong Cleveland sports fan and NBA scout. We'll bring him into the program right now. Hey, Zach, it's Brian with the New American Media. You are live on the air. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How about yourself? Living the dream, of course. I know that you have a little bit of stuff going on today, so we will kind of tear right into things and talk about some NBA action. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world of sports, but it really seems like after the NBA Finals, it hasn't stopped. It's really just moving right along. Players switching teams, Team USA getting ready, learning about the Cavs draft. So we're going to break these all down and pick them apart here. So I think maybe where we should start is maybe just discussing the Cavs, uh, maybe a week or so after the draft, not really knowing much about Dion Waiters myself. Um, you know, I've had a chance to study his game a little bit and read more about what the organization felt about him. What are your feelings now about the Cavs draft of uh, Tyler Zeller and Dion Waiters opposed to when uh, the, when it happened on the night of the draft? What have you learned? I, I mean, I've changed my stance semi. Uh, you know, obviously, it's definitely different than it was a week ago on Dion Waiters. You know, I didn't have a chance to watch him a lot during college. You know, I didn't watch a ton of Big East play. Uh, but now, you know, after talking with other scouts in the business and other league executives, basically, you know, and then I've also had a chance to watch film on my, you know, I haven't had a ton to do over the past week. So, I've, you know, I've watched a fair amount of film on Deion Waiters. It, you know, he just seemed to be slowed by Jim Behan's system down in Syracuse. Uh, he's more, you know, he's a slasher. He loves to get to the hoop. You know, he does have that Dwayne Wade in his game. I'm not saying he'll be the next Dwayne Wade because I don't think many people have, the, the, you know, that capability to be the next Dwayne Wade. You know, he's a superstar. Uh, Deion Waiters can be an all-star or two-guard in this league. Uh, you know, he's not the sharpest three-point shooter, but he does get to the hoop. And, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things in today's game. If, if you can get a guy to get to the hoop, and especially in the Cavs' offense, they're going to be running the floor real fast this year with Ian Irving, you know, in the backcourt. I, I think they can be exciting to watch this year. I, I really i warming up to the Deion Waiters pick, uh, but it'll, I want to see him, you know, in the NBA Summer League, too. You know, I'll have a chance to watch him there this summer for a couple of weeks. And, you know, that'll give me a real idea on him. But, like I said, I think he was just, you know, I just don't think he was properly used at Syracuse. And, you know, like I said, we were talking about this on the show in previous weeks. Uh, Russell Westbrook didn't really shine in college, you know, and he was a two-guard. You know, it, it's like there's certain systems where players don't technically thrive. And, you know, kind of like Billy Donovan in Florida, no one really excels in his system. 
yet he developed some pretty good NBA prospects. And same with Ben Holland at UCLA. You know, especially, you know, another guy is Darren Collison, who never, you know, was always just a solid college player. But, you know, he came to the league a few years ago and just exploded onto the scene. You know, and so it's just, you know, I think that could be the same thing with Deion Waiters. You know, hopefully he's not the next Marvin Williams. Hopefully he's, you know, closer to the next Dwayne Wade, but he could be somewhere in between. We just don't know yet. Okay, there's a good segue. I want to continue talking about the Cavs. I want to kind of bring up Tyler Zeller. I mean, we, we, we've kind of discussed him in the past, but, you know, I've, I've been reading up a little bit more, studying a little bit more about his game. You know, not seeing a dominating Shaquille O'Neal kind of player coming out of LSU by any means, but, um, you know, a, a four-year starter in a, in a really strong system, All-American kind of player, he's going to improve the team. I want to talk about him in a second, but w- when, you, when you were just talking about that other draft pick, let, let's talk about Danny Ferry for a minute because we've had a lot of commentary on our YouTube page um, a lot of people going back and forth, kind of ripping on us as, uh, well, me especially, standing up as a Cleveland Cavalier fan defending the home team. Um, but but somebody actually said, yeah, good luck. You know, they said, uh, well, you said Mike Brown was coach of the year and Danny Ferry was executive of the year. He goes, good luck. I, I bet Danny Ferry won't work in the league again. And he had already been hired <laughs> by Atlanta to run the Hawks. So let's talk about Atlanta for a second. What do you what do you think about what he's doing? Because you predicted it. You said Danny Ferry was going to be really active, and turns out you're absolutely right. Just like in Cleveland, he's making moves. What do you think he's doing down in Atlanta? What, what do you think his long term plan might be? I absolutely love what he's doing. You know, he, he got rid of the worst contract in basketball, and Joe Johnson, a guy who's a, you, you know, he's Joe Johnson's always been a good player, and it was it was just funny a couple of years ago when the Hawks signed him. I go, there is no way he is, you know, the funny thing is he's making more than LeBron James, more than Dwayne Wade, more than Chris Bosh. You know, he's one of the highest paid players in the league, believe it or not. And when he signed that deal a few years ago, you know, I, I was never convinced that LeBron would take less money to go to Miami because I go, there's no way this guy's going to be paid less than Joe Johnson a year. You know, <laughs> and, and I remember just thinking that in my head, and you used to have writers saying that all the time. You know, I, I just graduated college too also, you know, two years ago, two and a half years ago when all this was going down. And it's just funny that I can't believe that the, the Brooklyn Nets actually took on Joe Johnson's salary. It's a move that will help put fans in the stands over in Brooklyn. But Danny Ferry did a fantastic job because Atlanta would have been cap strapped for the next, you know, I think it's, I think he signed for the next three or four years. I think four years he signed a six-year deal. And, it, you know, Atlanta would have just been uh, in trouble, you know. And, like, the same thing every year with Atlanta, is they, they do the same thing every year. They win anywhere from 45 to 52 games. They go into the playoffs and they get bounced in the first or the second round. You know, you, you know, you know they're not a threat to make the finals. They're just one of those teams who are there every year as a four, a four, five, or six seed every year, and you know they're not going anywhere. So basically, they're a team that they're a team that's too good to rebuild and too bad to compete. Exactly my point. But you know, it, it, it's a problem in the NBA. That, you know, that every team's ultimate goal should eventually be to win a title. Not to just sit there and be a 50-win team every year and put, you know, put a mediocre talent on the floor, you know, to decent talent, and just go out there and try to win 50 games and be the number four seed. I mean, Atlanta's attendance is terrible every year. The fans don't care because they already know what kind of product is going to be on the floor. They're very predictable in what they do. And now you have a team that looks, you know, with Al Horford and Josh Smith, you know, you have a lot of cap room coming up this offseason, you know. It, there's the possibility they can try to package, you know, Al Horford and Jeff Teague and some picks you know, over to try to get Dwight Howard. And, you know, if, you know, Dwight Howard is from Atlanta. It's his hometown. Right now he hasn't said anything, you know, that he would agree to be there. But, I mean, his best friend is Josh Smith, you know, who's a starting power forward. And if you put, you know, if you put Howard back in his hometown with his best friend, you know, they have the more, they'll, they'll still have enough cap from this offseason to go out and if they want to. I'm not saying Chris Paul is definitely leaving the Clippers, but I'm saying it leaves the option open to pair up the three in Atlanta of Josh Smith, you know, Chris Paul and Dwight Howard, which would be a very good combination there. Well, I'll tell you what, let, let's get into that in a second. I want to break today's show up into a couple of components because a lot of people are running their searches and finding their favorite players and their favorite teams, so I want to split this so they can easily find it. Um, so so that's what Danny Ferry's doing on, down in Atlanta. I want to wrap up with the Cavs, and we'll move on to some of these other teams because I think I think you're onto something with the Nets overpaying to take on that contract. Not, not that he's a horrible player. It's just a pretty rough contract. But, you know, I think the Nets are pretty desperate with, with the new owner trying to make a splash, 
trying to do something, and, and the cards really just haven't fallen the right way, and we'll get to that. Um, but but I just wanted to, to wrap up the Cavs talking about Tyler Zeller. Um, you know, like I said previously, I, I think four years in a strong system, uh, he's an All-American, the guy has skill, he, he's not going to be the most dominant center in the league, but I think they've definitely upgraded the position, and he's a strong, well-rounded player that's definitely going to help the team. Do, do you have anything to expand on Tyler Zeller having a yeah, week or two to think about it? There's no doubt in my mind that Tyler Zeller is an upgrade over what the Cavs had. I mean, luckily, Semir Den is going back to Turkey to play. I mean, because you, you know my thoughts on Semi Den. I'm not a fan of his. I never have been a fan of his game. You know, if the guy was running a 40-yard dash, it would take him 11 seconds to finish <laughs> it. You know, I, I think Zeller's a huge upgrade at the position just because Semi Den may have been one of the three or four worst centers in the league last year. And taking a look at it now is if the Cavaliers wouldn't have drafted a center, they would have had to go overpay someone in free agency. I'm a big Omer Sheik fan, you know, who, in Chicago. But do I think he's worth $8.5 million a year? No. Uh, he's a backup center who put up three and a half points a game last year and just over five rebounds. I, I, I think centers are always overpaid in this league. And if you've got Zeller, you know, for $1.3 million this year, and he can give you just, you know, even slight production at the position, he's definitely better than what you could have gotten in free agency. So I do like the Zeller pick. I really do. Good big men are hard to come by. You know, he's not incredibly skilled. He doesn't do any one thing great. But he is a decent center. You know he's going to come out there every night and give it 110%. You know, he has that North Carolina mentality. You know, that Tyler Hansrow type. That he, you know, he's bigger than Hansrow. You know, and Zeller's good around the basket. He, he'll be fine for the Cavs, and he gives the Cavs their only, really their true center on the roster. You know, Verizhaz more of a combo, of, you know, a power forward in the center, more of a power right. forward. Thompson 6'9". You know, he adapted to the center position, I would say, pretty well last year. But like I said, he's still more of a power forward who can play center, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a game. And that's why it'll be nice having Zeller there at the position, you know, because it gives the Cavs some extra depth in the front court, which they desperately needed last year, especially with Anderson Verjao being injured two years in a row now. You, you know, you need someone at the position that can actually play it. Absolutely. We're talking with NBA scout and lifelong Cavalier fan Zach Barris. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick station identification break here. If you want to check out Zach and follow what he's up to, you can find him on Twitter at Z Barris. That's Z-B-A-R-I-S. And we are also at American underscore media underscore. If you're watching this on YouTube, please click that little subscribe button. We would appreciate that. So when we come back, I think what we need to do is talk a little bit about the Brooklyn Nets because they, they're kind of like the, the, the pretty decent looking girl that hasn't been asked out to the dance yet. And they're still going to be making some moves and we're waiting to see exactly what those are. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Steve Nash going to the Lakers, Kyle Lowry over to the Raptors, what's going on with Dwight Howard, Ray Allen, and more when we come back on the New American Media's The Unhappy Hour program. You are listening to The Unhappy Hour Sports Radio Show on the newamericanmedia.com. 